For those of you joining us from home, please stand and sing with us, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we join together spiritually, as you are watching at home this weekend, this is Divine Mercy Sunday, a feast that was declared by Pope John Paul II in the early 2000s, uh, celebrating uh, the gift of Jesus' divine mercy in our lives on this, the eighth day of Easter, the octave of Easter. So let's turn to that gift of his mercy as we ask for pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you extend to us your mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you show us the wounds in your side. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your resurrection, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. You know, and let us join together in singing glory to God in the highest. See 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what, what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Each day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the, in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, 
who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even, through, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers into the nail marks and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
You can be seated. The Sunday after Easter always has the same gospel reading that we affectionately call the gospel reading of Doubting Thomas. And one of the main reasons that this happens, we have this reading at this time, is that the original event happened one week after Easter, just like today is one week after Easter. I'll get back to Thomas a little later, but first, let's look at a couple of passages from our first two readings that may speak to us in a unique way this year as we face the ramifications of the COVID-19 pandemic. We heard from the Acts of the Apostles. St. Luke gives a view of the early Christian community, saying, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and the communal life and to prayers. All who believed were together and had all things in common. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and breaking bread in their homes. It sounds pretty ideal. Everyone focusing on their faith reaching out to each other in their need. But that is much of what we have seen people doing these last weeks. Neighbors taking care of each other, especially our elderly. People calling and checking in on each other. Grandparents and parents helping children as they do a very different form of school at home people making face masks, prayers being asked for, and prayers being received. What we haven't been able to do, and now that we don't have it, we may miss it even more, is to gather in the temple, the church, and to break bread together. Yes, we miss being gathered together here for prayer. And we truly miss breaking the bread. We, the body of Christ, receiving the bread of life. You and I have probably all heard stories about Catholic prisoners of war, whether it was World War I, II, v. Korea, Vietnam. And that some of these Catholic uh, uh, prisoners, some who were priests, but all who spoke about that longing to be able to pray in a parish community again and to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We long for it too, to be together in prayer and receive the sacraments. In the second reading from St. Peter's letter, we heard something else that rings true for us. Although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although now for a little while you may have to suffer. For most of us, it may feel much more than a little while. I heard it said that 2020 is a unique leap year. February, we know, had 29 days, 300 for March, and five years for April. It just seems to go on and on. Yes, it's a time of suffering. Our faith is tested. but. Like gold in the furnace, our faith can be purified, strengthened. Back to the Gospel reading and Thomas. At the moment, did Thomas have doubts, questioning his brother disciples? Yes, but who want at such a moment? Faith is always going to be met with doubts. This is a part of the human condition. Everyone suffers times, often just fleeting moments, when he or she has doubts, 
maybe about the existence of God or the divinity or humanity of Jesus, the Eucharist or other teachings of the church, we will not be totally free of doubts until we see God face to face in eternity. I love the story of the man whose son was suffering some form of what we would call epilepsy now. You'll find the story in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus came upon quite a scene, a lot of noise and yelling, people all gathered, seeming to be upset over something or another. So Jesus asked, what's going on? And a man was there, a man who was there said, sir, my son suffers from a spirit that seizes him throws him down, and causes him to foam from the mouth and roll around. Jesus asked him, How long has this been happening? Since childhood, the man responded. Then he added, Sometimes he is thrown into the water or into a fire. Then the man said to Jesus, Sir, if you can do anything, please help him. And Jesus replied, I can. Everything is possible for someone who has faith. Then the boy's father shouted out, I do believe, Lord. Help those parts of me that don't believe. With that, the Lord healed the boy. Help me with those parts of me that don't believe. That is our prayer too when we realize how little our faith is at times. Thomas did have faith. He was the disciple who spoke up when Jesus decided to go to Jerusalem, and the other disciples tried to dissuade him from going. They said to Jesus, Rabbi, the Jews were seeking to stone you, and you are going to go there again? It was Thomas who said, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then on that Sunday, a week after the resurrection, Thomas was not asking for anything that already hadn't been given, hadn't been given to the other disciples. After all, on Easter Sunday, they all saw Jesus. So Thomas's faith gets tested and purified when he sees the Lord. Jesus looked at Thomas and said, Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And he did, responding, my Lord and my God. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, in the midst of all the chaos of the world, we too get down on our knees and proclaim our faith, my Lord and my God. To go together, let us rise up and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of the divine mercy in our lives, let us now raise our prayers to the Lord whose resurrection has brought us life. The response to each prayer is, Risen Jesus, hear our prayer. For all who minister in God's name, may the work that they do help to strengthen the faith of all they are privileged to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Jesus, Jesus hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those whose faith is weak or have no faith, that they may be open to the power and the presence of the resurrected Lord in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. For our seminarians, especially Josh, John, and Lawrence, and all those discerning the religious life, may they know of our prayers and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Jesus, hear our prayer. For families and all those celebrating this Eucharist in their homes, that the grace and peace of Jesus Christ may be a source of consolation and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from recent natural disasters and for our world as we experience this pandemic, may the Holy Spirit bring us peace and open our hearts to hear and respond to the needs of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, hear our prayer. For Deacon Paul, as he prepares for his kidney transplant, and for Carlos, the recipient, may the outcome be a blessing to both of them and their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially all those suffering from the coronavirus, may they know the healing touch of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, especially Walter Crummy, brother of Melanie McNutt, may they now experience eternal life with the risen Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear, hear our, our prayer. And now at home, I invite you to add your own petitions. And if you want to pause, so that you can do that in the time that is appropriate for you. But let us add our prayers in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, your triumph over death renews our faith knowing with absolute certainty that all is possible with your assistance. Help us to always manifest our faith in you by the words of our mouth and the actions of our lives. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. And again, we want to thank all who continue to send their offerings uh, to church, dropping them off at the office or mailing them in or doing online and ask you, for your continued support in our parish ministries.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We invite you to kneel at home. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, Victor, our Bishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand as, and as the Savior, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you at home to join me in praying the spiritual communion prayer. I will do one short line at a time, I invite you to repeat it. My Jesus, my Jesus, Jesus I believe that you, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. Are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It was a joy earlier this week to see so many parishioners who came to receive palms and to receive the uh, d divine uh, mercy image. Uh, it was good to see uh, all of you continue to reach out to each other, pray for each other, Help each other out as you can, uh, best can. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. As we go forward this morning, please join us in singing Easter Alleluia. (laughs) 